Introduction In the year 1543, two revolutionary books were published. One was about how the sun, the planets, and the stars are arranged in the heavens. The other was about the marvelous design of the human body. The publication of these two books is considered by most historians to mark the beginning of a period in history known as the Scientific Revolution. Why? More than any other work up to this point in history, these two books were willing to question the teachings of ancient authorities and instead concentrate on what could be observed in the present. As a result, these books started a process that would revolutionize the study of the natural world. Instead of referring to people from the past, natural philosophers, that's what scientists were called back then, would start making observations in the present and would use those observations to explain how the world around them worked. If you've studied much science at all, you have probably heard names like Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, and Pascal. These men lived in this time period. They were eager to learn how nature worked because they thought that by studying nature they could learn more about God. For example, in a letter to the Grand Duchess of Tuscany in 1615, Galileo wrote, For the Holy Bible and the phenomena of nature proceed alike from the divine word. After discussing what he meant by that, he quoted Tertullian, a Christian author who lived from about AD 160 to about AD 225. We conclude that God is known first through nature, and then again, more particularly, by doctrine, by nature in his works, and by doctrine in his revealed word. This, of course, echoes what Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says. There is no excuse for people who reject God. Even if they have never read the Bible or heard the good news of Jesus Christ, God's handiwork the created world, makes his presence and his nature clear to everyone. The Christian faith of those who started and continued the scientific revolution had a profound impact on their science, and you will learn a lot about that as you move through this course. I personally think this is one reason the scientific revolution was such an astounding success. Because science was being done in the context of the Christian faith, it was incredibly effective. Lots of progress was made because those studying the world around them realized that in order to fully understand nature, you had to understand the characteristics of its creator. As you study this course, I want you to keep in mind something that was said by Robert Boyle, another great natural philosopher from this time period. In a speech he gave to other natural philosophers of his day, he said, Remember to give glory to the one who authored nature.